The economic cooperation between China and North Korea has moved into the next level, with joint development projects being officially begun. Since the groundbreak ceremony for Hwang Geun-pyong's special economic reason took place, work on the Nasan development project looks set to begin soon. This will inevitably mean closer ties between China and North Korea. Let's find out more about what this could mean for us in today's discussion. Please join us after the newsreel. On June 8th, the groundbreaking ceremony for the Hwang Geun-pyong development project was held. North Korea has leased the area to China to be developed into a special economic zone. Then there was the groundbreaking ceremony for Dasan, a port city in North Korea's northeast region. It is also being jointly developed as a special economic zone by China and North Korea. The two regions along the North Korea-China border, Dasan in the eastern end and Hwang Geun-pyong in the west, have become the centers of bilateral economic cooperation. North Korea plans to develop its economy in the coastal areas along the West and East Seas, with Nasan and Hwang Geun-pyong acting as hubs. Hwang Geun-pyong will focus on light industries, while Nasan will focus on heavy industries such as chemical, automaking and shipbuilding, high-tech industries such as computer, communications devices and medicines, as well as logistics. With the economic projects between China and North Korea officially beginning, Let's learn more about the significance and how we should respond to such developments. Welcome back. In order to discuss today's topic, China and North Korea's joint economic projects, we have two expert guests in the studio. Sitting on my right is uh, Dr. Yang Un Chol, Director of Unification Strategy Studies at the Sejong Institute. Welcome to our program. Thank you. And then the uh, sitting on my left is Professor Andrei Lankov, the professor at Kungmin University. Yeah. There is one uh, news which drew uh, lots of the attention, not only from Korea, but also the nations around the world. That is the economic cooperation between uh, China and North Korea. So uh, uh, they, the name of the projects are Hwang Geun-pyong and the uh, Nasan uh, Special Economic Zone projects. But by the way, uh, for us, the Hwang Geun-pyong and uh, Nasan, the names of these reasons are quite strange to us. So uh, I want to know the, uh, these reasons first. Dr. Yang, would you please explain the, these two reasons? Okay. Uh, Hwang Geun-pyong is just developed since 1992. It's right now this very uh, fruitful just farmland. But mm -hmm. uh, China and North Korea together want to develop that area. And another, Nasan is very famous for Korean. It's uh, since also early 1990s, just it developed. At that time, just uh, North Korea set up the new rules and then decreed the law, and they developed that area. But one of the problem is that uh, at that time, the Najin Sombong area project failed because it's, it's pretty good for remote area from Pyongyang, so they blocked the political implication or influence. But uh, they focus too much, for example, tourism and heavy industry, light industry, site tour. Mm -hmm. So they lost the just focus, so they cannot concentrate that part. And another one, uh, Hwang Geun-pyong is a pretty good place, but uh, ground is not firm in the sense of geology. So they have to, to solidify the ground. It's simply, they should lay the solid ground the foundation, so it costs a lot. So I think it will take a long time. Area. Mm -hmm. Professor Lankov, uh, I want to uh, know the details of the, uh, the projects themselves. Could you tell us the details of the projects? Well, it's a bit too early to know what they're really going to do there. Mm -hmm. With Rasson, it seems to be quite simple and straightforward. Mm -hmm. It's about transportation costs. Uh, because Chinese, northeastern part of China, Chinese Manchuria, mm -hmm. is landlocked. I see. Imagine. There is a factory in northern Manchuria, mm. and if they are shipping something overseas, they have first moved it to the nearest Chinese port, which is roughly 1,000 kilometers away. If they can use Rasson and have a short link to Rasson by railway or highway, they can save a lot on transportation costs. Mm. So it's clear with Rasson. Mm -hmm. This synergy is much more complicated. I don't see really much advantage from the Chinese side, with the sole exception. Probably the Chinese side hope to use cheap North Korean labor. 
uh, because we have an assumption that, you know, Chinese labor is cheap. Well, not anymore, not anymore. Mm -hmm. The average monthly salary for semi-skilled worker, monthly salary, mm -hmm. will be about $100, and Chinese worker. And the North mm -hmm. Korean probably $20, $15, much mm -hmm. cheaper. Mm -hmm. But but it's still not certain about Sinijou. Mm -hmm. So Rason is about transportation. Sinijou may be about cheap North Korean labor, but we don't know yet. Yes. We will discuss about the gains which mm -hmm. Chinese government, mm -hmm. Chinese economy will get from this project later. Uh, but the, uh, Professor Young, yes. as far as I know, the, uh, grand, uh, uh, the uh, breaking ceremony for Hwang Gampyeong was scheduled to be held in late May, but it was delayed to June. Uh, is it correct? Yes. And uh, why? Why did it happen? Yeah, we can guess absolutely there was some the conflict of interest between China and North Korea. Mm -hmm. But it appears that China and North Korea just managed eventually to settle the difference. Mm -hmm. So I think in, in for North Korea, they really wants that the Chinese a lot of Chinese investment, but China wants some kind of what kind of some kind of insurance because in China already experienced lots of experience just to fail that. Uh, for example, counterfeiting everything, so breaking the, the contract. Mm -hmm. So it's not that easy to make money in North Korea. So they want to make sure that. Uh, because in the North Korean system is a kind of averse to investment, so they want to change the, some friendly investment environment. But I think there might be some settlement right now. Mm -hmm. So that's the why the North Korea is right now calling investment for by uh, Chinese state-owned company mm -hmm. instead of a private company. In that case, China can invest mm -hmm. without any some uh, consideration. I see. Even though they failed it, uh, maybe central government can cover up. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I, I would like to ask uh, a, this question to both of you, or uh, anyone can answer my question. As far as I remember, uh, it was uh, last June. I mean, the 6th of June. Mm -hmm. uh, on that day, the North Korean government announced mm -hmm. the, uh, its plan to develop Hwang Gampyeong at the Supreme People's Assembly uh, Presidium. Mm -hmm. The objectives of this uh, plan was, I mean, to expand, strengthen their economic ties with the foreign countries. How we can interpret the intention of those kind of the uh, North Korean government the uh, uh, policy. Well, well, yes. I think that basically North Korean government is in an extremely complicated situation. Mm. They are stuck with their economic system, which is not very efficient. Mm. It's essentially an old, centrally planned Leninist economy, mm -hmm. and with a lot of black market around. They cannot reform themselves like China did, uh, because they are afraid that reforms in divided North Korea is likely to lead to a regime collapse or a serious crisis. Mm. So, in order to compensate for inefficiency of the economy, they would like to get foreign aid mm. and foreign investment yeah, yeah. as long as they can keep it under control. Mm. They tried and to some extent they did succeed in getting investment and aid from South Korea and United States mm. in recent past. Mm -hmm. But over the last few years, hardliners are in control of the Blue House, mm -hmm. so they don't get much from South Korea. They still get something, but mm -hmm. not as much as they want through mm -hmm. Kaesong Industrial Complex. Mm -hmm. So they are looking for opportunity, and the only opportunity which is currently available, the only country which is willing to invest is China. So they are taking it. North Korean leaders probably have a lot of reservations. They don't want to be too dependent on China. They don't want to be too close to China, mm. but they have no choice. Mm. But by the way, the political stability or, I mean, host countries' policy uh, is the most important part for the foreign investors. Yeah. Considering the North Korean situation, do you think it's okay? I think that politically it's stable. There are uh, other problems because the experience of all countries which used to work with North Korea, mm. including Russia, mm. including China, this experience indicates that North Koreans are very bad partners. I see. They break promises, they cheat, 
they uh, try to get some small gains and now mm -hmm. it's probably even more complicated mm -hmm. because there is a great deal of rivalry and competition and clashes between agencies and groups and individuals within the North Korean leadership. Mm -hmm. So it's not instability as such. Mm -hmm. It's simply very bad discipline, a lot of kind of, you know, small bureaucratic mm -hmm. obstacles mm -hmm. and sometimes just cheating. I see. How about you? Yeah, if I had one mm -hmm. more thing that uh, I think the Developing Hwang Gampyeong is, I think, the last resort for North Korean economy because in North Korean economy, as you know, it's in dire straits, so they really need some money. Mm. But as you know, that's the United Nations and maybe mainly in uh, United States of America, they just had a very heavy sanctions on North Korea. So North Korea just uh, commercial activity is very limited, so restricted. So to avoid that, they have to, to rely on the China. But China is also, like right now, the world leader, so they cannot fully support the North Korea. So I think Hwang Gampyeong, developing Hwang Gampyeong is a kind of some uh, settlement between two countries. Mm. They may allow that area and then they lend that area and then to get some money back. Uh, as, as in many newspapers, it says that at least the five million US dollar, mm. North Korea can get it. Mm -hmm. instead of lending them land to 50 years to China. I see. Yeah. By the way, well, the, uh, the development of the uh, Hwang Gampyeong and Nasen Special mm -hmm. Economic uh, Zone means the uh, market reforms will take place in North Korea. Is there any uh, political uh, implications behind the economic mm -hmm. development? I don't think so. Is uh -huh. it, when you talk about the market, just activity and we need some this very independent buy and <laughs> sell but in that case the North Korean government control everything mm -hmm. they just only allow that the Chinese just people to make a, a business in their territory so I think that's quite deep but it's a beginning step but eventually North Korea will transform to the, also another world like economic transition mm. process they they'll do but Right now, in short term, I don't think we cannot expect this, this to worry. Probably, I just yes. make another remark. They do, uh, they prefer to deal with special economic zones mm -hmm. exactly because they don't want to do market reforms. Oh. The choice of mm -hmm. uh, the, their expectations is that they have small kind of islands mm -hmm. of market economy mm -hmm. and leave the society in general more or less untouched. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I have been doing North Korea for 25 years, uh -huh. and every three or four years, I, hear a, I see a wave of speculations mm -hmm. about coming reforms. Mm -hmm. First time it was 1984, mm -hmm. when they passed a law of joint enterprises. Then in 1991, when Rasson Special Economic Zone was established. Then in 2002, when they introduced very mild changes in the economic management and I sort see. of uh, 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 decreased control over markets. Everybody was talking they are going to reform themselves. Well, almost everybody. I was mm. not. <laughs> and honestly, in this case, I don't, I don't expect much change because mm. changes, Chinese-style changes might be suicidal and they are very afraid of that. I see. But the, uh, do you think they can uh, control perfectly? No, they don't control perfectly. <laughs> Their control is to a very large extent dead. The North Korean economy is a combination of, of a relatively small sector, of yeah. state-run mm -hmm. Stalinist mm -hmm. economy, mm -hmm. and a huge black market around. Mm. Because for all practical purposes, it's essentially a capitalist country now. Mm. But it's not encouraged by the government. Mm. It's capitalism from below very inefficient mm. and with a lot of corruption and war, very low efficiency. Mm. Uh, so it's a black market capitalism. I see, I see. Well, you just already uh, are the explained about the, the uh, benefits, gains, which Chinese government can get from the joint economic um, the, uh, development projects with North Korea. Could you elaborate more about the, uh, the gains which uh, Chinese can take? First of all, I would like to underline that from mm. the Chinese point of view, the decision to engage with North Korea is above all political. Uh -huh. It's not about gains. They do have some gains, mm -hmm. but we should never forget that it's largely about strategy. Mm -hmm. But talking about the economic gains, mm -hmm. there are basically only three major areas where China can, can gain something in North Korea. First, it's of course transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, because as I have said, northeastern China is landlocked. 
-hmm. And if they can use North Korean port facilities, it will help them to save a small fortune on transportation costs. Mm -hmm. Second, cheap labor. Uh, North Korean labor is much cheaper than labor in China. Yes, Probably yes. inferior quality, but still <clears throat> quite good. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you pay, say, a semi-scaled worker in China roughly $100 a month, it will be sufficient to pay 20 or 25 or maybe even $15 uh -huh. for the same work to a North Korean. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the average monthly salary, official salary in North Korea is 2 or $3 a month now, $2 a month. But everybody makes extra money on black market. $15, $20 go are good money, $20 mm. a month. Mm. It's a good money in North mm. Korea. Mm. And third are North Korean natural resources. Uh, because North Korea is relatively rich, I would emphasize relatively mm. rich. Mm. These, uh, in, in natural resources, it's have iron ore, it's have coal, oh, yes. it's have rare earth, it's mm. have copper. So mm. develop of these resources. Only three major areas, labor, transportation, resources. Mm. But once again, mm. it's all this combined is secondary. Primary mm. issue is strategy, stability in the area, control, nuclear issues, everything else, okay. political issues. Yes, I, I agree with uh, Dr. Lankov's opinion, but uh, as I know that in China has one kind of policy, it's so-called one core and two axis. That means in China has both the Russia and the North Korea. So it's the same thing, just in Russia and North Korea, they need some uh, transportation, just the load and the port and the custom office. Mm -hmm. And so that means it's kind of logistics and the distribution center. Actually, mm -hmm. China wants that because they mm -hmm. don't have any just the power to get to go to the East DC directory. So they want to set up the two logistics center between uh, China, yeah, China and uh, mm -hmm. no, no, North Korea and the I think that's a very yes, important Russia, point, yeah. too. Uh, well, uh, let's move to the uh, next question. Uh, actually, um, um, in uh, response to the, the joint economic development projects mm -hmm. between uh, China and North Korea, uh, there should be many, uh, I mean, res various responses from the countries around the world, I mean, including Korea. So let's discuss about the responses of the countries, I mean, many nations, toward the, I mean, I mean, towards the, uh, this uh, joint economic development project. How about Korean responses? Uh -huh. Yeah, Korea actually wants that the North Korean economy develop more, and then we expect that. But we tried a lot, as we know, just even sunshine policy, just everything, engagement policy, and, and even, even we blocked them. But mm -hmm. it all failed, I guess. But the reason is that and it depends on pure reason, North Korea. Mm -hmm. South, South Korea can do many just uh, uh, policy implications, but it failed. If we just, like the, in, when you look at the mountain, just there, there's a peak, there's a several <laughs> ways to yeah. climb that. Right. But we tried it. A course, B route to C route, but it all failed. So it actually the success or fail it depends on the North Korea. But changing North Korea is not that easy. Uh, North Korea really wants that kind of support from South Korea, implicitly, mm. like uh, to recognize their like a power succession. But South Korea still we have some problems. Sonanham and the Yeonpyeong Island just uh, instance. So we cannot just uh, allow them. So just to, to wait, really, yeah, yeah, just just to wait, wait and see. see, yeah. Yeah, I see. Right. How about the responses from the global community? Well, I would say there is no such a thing as global community. Mm, it no. consists of different countries mm -hmm. with different interests, mm. and the responses will be different. Yes. Uh, the major variable is a, how a particular country uh, perceives, how does it perceive a rise of China. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would not expect much objections for it, say coming from Russia, mm. which is not really quite alive China, but it's sort of okay. Mm. Of course, uh, United States are not going to be happy, and Japan no, is, is no. also not going to be no. happy. Mm. Uh, and the State Department even already made some statements that it might be in violation of, you know, the sanctions regime, everything. Mm. So, well, I would say that countries which are which feel unease about rising China, mm. they are going to be unhappy because it does increase Chinese strategic capabilities and mm. Chinese influence in the area. I see. I think also the re response just depends on how North Korea can get back to the international uh, community arena because they lost all the trust. So China implicitly just uh, moved North Korea 
to the like the international area and then to get back there some trust. But as I said before, it takes time and then it's a long way to go. But if they mm -hmm. success, maybe we can expect a lot of economic investment. In this. Yeah, I think, well, as the uh, Professor Lanka pointed out, some countries are really worried about the increasing influences, Chinese influences over, mm -hmm. on the, over the Korean Peninsula. Uh, so uh, I, I think certainly uh, this is the, uh, one of the uh, uh, I mean, interesting issues for the, uh, the countries, neighboring countries of South Korea, or mm -hmm. the big, big countries uh, I mean, the, uh, close to Korea. Could you elaborate more about the, uh, the points they are really worried about in seeing the increasing Chinese influences over the Korean Peninsula? Well, um, say such countries like uh, the United States or Japan, mm -hmm. they uh, perceive the rise of China with a great deal of unease. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's quite clear that China is going to become a dominant force, at least in East Asia, and maybe on ma in much larger area. Uh, so uh, they worry about general rise of China, and they feel very uneasy mm -hmm. about growing Chinese domination, I would say economic domination, not mm -hmm. political maybe, mm -hmm. but economic domination of North Korea. Mm -hmm. So far, obviously, China doesn't have much political leverage mm -hmm. in North Korea, mm -hmm. but people are afraid that it, uh, this uh, current economic domination will probably translate into political influence. And all countries which see China as a rival, as a challenger, are not happy about it. Mm, mm. So, but in this case, it's largely about Japan and United States. And talking about uh, South Korea, it's a different position because, uh, but still, there is a great deal of unease about uh, rising China in South Korea as well. Okay. Do you want something to add? Yeah, I think involving the Hwang Gampyeong area yeah. and the Rasan project, China, I think, it gives some pressure to North Korea. Mm. Because in China, even they are just the world reader right now, but they got a lot of brain from United Nations, especially United States of America, because uh, what are you doing for North Korea? So actually, China really wants to get some pressure to North Korea, but there's no other way. China, e every day, just the day said that we need the Korean Peninsula stability and then mm. nuke pre Korean mm. Peninsula. But I think the only way, as La Mr. Lankop said, that this the really policy instruments, they might be the economic investment or economic uh, activity might be, they think that at least they are second best for North Korea mm -hmm. to give them the pressure. Okay, Professor Lankov, well, the North Korea and China, they just started to cooperate each other, I mean, economically. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you think about their relationship will uh, continue uh, for a long time? Uh, oh, absolutely. Mm. Uh, right now, as I have said, North Korea has no choice. North Korea needs an outside sponsor because its economy mm. is quite inefficient. Mm -hmm. So to stay afloat, they need outside aid. Mm. They would like to have two or three sponsors mm. which would be on bad terms Mm -hmm. So they would be able to manipulate and to use the confrontation and rivalry between the sponsors. Mm -hmm. But so far, only China is willing to do so. Mm -hmm. So, well, they have no uh, choice but to accept uh, the cooperation with China and try to milk China as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Chinese approach is uh, sort of, it's also, Chinese approach is also driven by strategy. Uh, because China, on the Korean Peninsula, China needs, first of all, stable Korean Peninsula, mm -hmm. second, divided Korean Peninsula. Mm -hmm. They want a uh, division of Korea to continue uh, because uh, North Korea is an ideal buffer zone mm -hmm. and they are afraid that unified Korea mm -hmm. in case of regime collapse in the North and unification will be more or less pro-American. It's the second reason. So for stability, second division, and the third is, of course, denuclearization. I see. So they would like to, they are ready to invest some money, maybe not that much, Mm -hmm. Just in keeping North Korea afloat, f because it's a way to keep stability, and it's also a way to keep Korea divided. Okay. Well, time is very limited, so I'd like to ask you, I mean, give the final question to both of you. What kind of measures South Korean government should take uh, in response to the, the uh, increasing um, economic cooperation between China oh, and North Korea? Okay. Yeah, we can uh, answer maybe two ways. In the first, if, if. Huh? If Korean majority of Korean people really worry about the Chinese influence to North Korea, in that case, we of course we can uh, strengthen the 
Inter-Korean Economic Cooperation, especially the Gaesung Industrial Complex. That's a kind of countervailing power to Chinese uh, just approach to Hwangunpyeong and Rasun area. And second one is that if co Korean people do not think just seriously Chinese influence North Korea, in that case we can wait and see and then just uh, we wait and maybe eventually there might be some settlement in between China and North Korea okay. and then we approach again. Thank you. Yeah. Basic, seconds. Uh, basically the same. Mm -hmm. I would say that if there are, if Korean government believes that there are easy need to contain uh, Chinese influence, the best and probably the only solution is it to restart cooperation. I see. North Koreans will be happy. They want to like milk China and South <laughs> Korea. <laughs> well, thank you, Professor Lankov and uh, Dr. Yang Un Chol. Uh, well, we had a very uh, uh, the productive discussion, I think. Well, I am Shin Sang Hyub, and the, uh, uh, thank you very much.